Welcome to another episode of the Urban Wall Street Project. I'm your host, Earl Christian III, of course. Today we're on location in Midtown Manhattan, 13 East 37th Street between 5th and Madison at the amazing Zero Waste Restaurant and Bar. I'm telling you, the cuisine in here is off the chain. You know we were trying to bring you something different, so we're going to go talk to my man, Amos Zero Way, about life after the NFL. This brother was an amazing cat on the gridiron. We're going to go see what he does in the kitchen and how he makes it happen in his restaurant. So keep watching. We're going to go make it happen. Trust the food is good. Follow me. Welcome to another episode of the Urban Wall Street Project. I'm your host, Earl Christian III, of course. Today we're on location in Midtown Manhattan, to say 37th and 5th. I'm at the incredible Zero Ways restaurant and bar, and I'm here with former NFL star, Amos Zero Way. You've seen him do a lot of amazing things on the field, but now he done turned that talent into his chef and culinary skills. He has a restaurant, so we're gonna talk about life after the NFL and life being a restaurateur. Without further ado, Mr. Amos Zero Way. Amos, what's good, brother? I'm chilling, man. Thanks for having me on your show today. Yeah, definitely, thank you for having me and you know having the opportunity to do it. And you know, we've been talking about some other things we're doing, but it's real good. But you know, the Urban Wall Street Project is all about educating our people, talking about, you know, doing great things and going for your dream and achieving your dream. And of course, you know, there's millions of young brothers all across the country and the world who would love to play in the NFL and get that chance. So before we even go into you know the business of being a restaurateur and a businessman now, I wanna just talk about, you know, your days in the NFL and what that was felt like to accomplish that dream. Uh, I mean, for me, it was, uh, you know, I didn't really start out as a football player. I was originally a soccer player. Uh, but for me to come to uh, another country like the States and, 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 and progress and, and be successful at the professional level was, it was an amazing feat for me. Uh, but uh, it wasn't an easy task, you know. Uh, in life, where everything you do is going to be, you have to put in the work in order for you to succeed. And uh, playing in the league was like one of the most, you know, uh, exciting, uh, you know, uh, aggressive, uh, competitive things I've ever done in my life. Uh, but it was also, you know, uh, rewarding. So, you know, uh, all in all, it was it was it was definitely an exciting time in, in, in my life. Now I know you were in the league. How many how many years were you in the league for, Amos? I played uh, seven years in the league. Okay, okay. team. Five years with the Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, a year with the Oakland Raiders, and um, almost a year with the New England Patriots. So it was to take me back, you know, because I know it's such an exhilarating moment, just, you know, being drafted into NFL playing, but for my young individuals who are high school kids, the college kids, and they dream of getting into the NFL, let's first talk about what was the moment like when you heard your name called drafted and you knew it was about to go down? Right, right. Well, my situation was a little different because, uh, Everyone expects to go earlier than what they're, what they're projected to be. Uh, I was projected to be a first or second round pick. I, didn't end up, I ended up getting picked at, uh, on the third round, in the third round. And at first, initially, it was, it was, I was kind of bummed out about it. But uh, after I got the signing bonus, I kind of forgot about the round I went in. But, uh, you know, it's, it's an exciting moment. Uh, you, you hear your name called. and. You know, uh, a lot of kids dream about it, and when it, it finally happens, it's like the whole family, your friends, everyone's elated about the whole thing, and you know, just a, a time in your moment in your life where you just never believe what happened. When it does happen, you just don't know how to react to it. I can only imagine. Now, you know, me, myself, my brother, he's a football fanatic. He loves football. I've played it as a child myself, and but you know, I'm, I'm a TV guy. I do production, and this is my thing. But I always love to see people, you know, following their passion and becoming professional at whatever it is um, that they want to do. Did you? You said you soccer was your first choice. Um, what made you go ahead and just make the transition to football? Well, um, when I. All my friends were football players, and I was the only soccer player amongst the group. And you know, they used to get on me and tease me about you know playing soccer and uh, you know get over him, play with the real, with the real boys, the real ball. And 
you know, I, I looked at it as a challenge, you know, you know, I responded to the challenge, went out there and tried it, and I uh, did pretty well in it, and, uh, and I've been playing ever since then. Now that word challenge is very important, I'm glad you said it. What's one of the greatest challenges? Because a lot of cats, you know, I see folks, you know, we sit and watch football at home, brothers sit around and they yelling at the screen, oh, I could do this, or you should have gone around this way, why are you? And everybody think they can do it so much better when they're sitting at home. What's one of the greatest challenges when you, when you touch that gridiron, brother? Well, first off, it's just getting through training camp. I mean, uh, folks only see what happens on Sundays. They don't see the grind and you know, the, the blood, sweat, and tears that goes into it before that game on Sunday. Uh, you know, the training camps and the mini camps and, you know, um, uh, just playing college, just all these top guys who are in great shape, have the best talent, and you have to compete against these guys each and every day. And, uh, you know, so unless you're like a guy who just that much better than everyone else. You know, your job is on the line every day. You know, they're looking, they're always looking for someone younger, someone better, someone cheaper. And uh, I think day in and day out, it's, 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 it's a challenge for, for you to keep your job. You know, so that's the greatest, you know, challenge. Now, you know, of course, you know, each year there's always rookies coming into the league, young brothers that are just ready, they're fired up, they're ready to show the world, the NFL, what they can do, their teams, players, and coaches. What's one of you think some of the biggest misconceptions, or I should say mistakes, young players coming into the league may make or do make? Well, thinking that talent alone is going to get, get them through, uh, through the league and, and not realizing that it's a job now, you know. It's not college, you know. You don't have one on. You don't have someone on your back telling you what to do, and you know, uh, you're a grown man now. So you have you have responsibilities on and off the field, and uh, that's that's the, the misconception these guys have is the fact that you know they they're thinking that uh, someone's gonna look over them and uh, watch after them every day, but that's not the that's not the case. You know, uh, you have to make big man decision and. You know, some of them aren't ready for that. Uh, you, give, you give a young man of 21, 22 year old all this money, and uh, uh, they're thinking that you know uh, they can just come on and play ball, and everything else will take care of itself. But uh, that's that's the biggest misconception. Yeah, now I want to ask a question before we go into the next location, so we can show you know show the establishment. I'm glad you said about money. So many people feel that like, oh, these players make so much money. It's ridiculous. They're inordinate amounts of money, and then they don't perform. They don't score touchdowns. They don't do that. And when it comes to the, the salary, I think about you know the level of work ethic that you have to put into it. Uh, do you feel that those salaries are justifiable, brother? Absolutely, absolutely. You gotta look at it this way. Football is probably the only sport amongst the big three, which is basketball, baseball, and hockey, that the salary isn't guaranteed. In the football game, one hit can change the whole your whole life. And uh, you know, not, I don't think any amount of money can, can compensate for, you know, you being able to walk or have a conversation with your daughter or your, your son. And, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely, yeah, you know, worth it for, the, for them to get, get all this money that they're getting, definitely. Well, we're going to go check out a few more. We're going to look at the establishment because I'm going to tell you, Zerway is an amazing spot, upscale, five stars. So if you're in New York City, definitely come check it out, 37th and 5th between... 5th and Madison, 13 East 37th Street, but the 5th and Madison. We're going to um, check out a few other things. I think the bar is kind of popping, because it is a restaurant bar, and Amos likes to have his wine on. So let's go check out the bar and see what's happening over there. So like I told you, Zero Way is an amazing restaurant and bar, and now you see we've transitioned to another part of the establishment. Once again, it's located 13 East 37th Street between 5th and Madison, so if you're in the city, it's definitely a spot to come check out. So we talked a little bit about football, but now we're going to get into the restaurant tour because this is life after the NFL for my brother right here. He's done some amazing things on the field, and now he has an amazing restaurant, and the food is in... Impeccable. We're going to talk about his own passion for being a chef and food and the fine cuisine. So, hey, let's talk about this uh, restaurant business, brother. What what made you choose the restaurant game after football? Well, you know, I uh, I used to cook for my teammates when I was at Steelers. You know, I would have you know people at the house and uh, we would have get-togethers and I would you know spice up a little bit of uh, African dishes, some exotic things here and there. And then the guys really taking a liking to it and. Um, a lot of them kind of uh, persuaded me to open up something one day, but I kind of blew it off, not opening up a restaurant. But eventually, I was I was home after I was done playing, and uh, it just came to mind that uh, instead of sitting around, I, lo I love to cook. You know.
know, I love to entertain. Why not do something? I'm in New York already. I grew up on Long Island, so I figured, you know, what better place would, you know, to do something than, than New York, you know. I so started looking for a place and decided to make it happen. Okay. Now, you know, Urban Wall Street is all definitely about entertaining our people. And it's, I know it's a major situation when you have a restaurant. It's not easy to establish it. Location, you know, it's very key because it's expensive, it's different things. So what were some of the, um, the first steps you had to take with regard to starting a restaurant here in Manhattan? Well, like you said, uh, first thing is location. Um, location is everything. Mm -hmm. uh, if you find the right location, uh, then you have to have Food has to be wonderful, um, then you have to have the service. Um, all in all, you know, uh, the restaurant business is, I didn't think I can find anything that was harder than football. Right. This is it. Yeah. This is definitely it. Uh, what makes it so? Uh, you have to deal with vendors, you never know what to expect uh, on a daily basis. Um, you have to deal with um, customers, you have to deal with uh, employees and, you know, um, just everything. Uh, so on a daily basis, there's a different problem. There's a different obstacle that you have to overcome, uh, and, and it goes on and on. But it's you know, once when, when things are going good, it's really very very good. Mm -hmm. When things are bad, it's really bad. So there's no kind of middle middle ground. But uh, you know, it's, it's it's one of the difficult, most difficult things I've ever done in my life. And I know some of the logistics, you know, I've done a lot of presentations and speaking to people in community boards. And I know, you know, like I said, location is key. And of course, you know, there's so many different components, getting a liquor license, getting the um, establishment. It's, it's getting a liquor license tough because a lot of people say, I want to open a liquor store, a restaurant. And it's, they don't just think they can just write a letter and get a liquor license. Is that one of the more challenging aspects? Definitely one of the most challenging. I, I, I've, I've, I was part of the, 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 the few that had a uh, problem getting my liquor license. It took me almost a year to get a liquor license. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, uh, yeah, they're not giving out liquor license nowadays like they used to, um, uh, the way things are these days. And you know, but if you are uh, lucky to get one, you know, we count your blessings because, like you said, uh, liquor license, you know, with, with so much, you know, uh, violence and so so much uh, incidents going on with you know drunk driving and people, you know, fighting in the clubs and in, in, in different areas, it's really it's making it difficult for guys to get uh, uh, liquor licenses. So now, you know, I've, I've sampled the food, you know, and I know it's great, but what, what type of cuisine do you serve here, Abe? It's a uh, yeah, West African French fusion. Um, I'm originally from the Ivory Coast on the west um, side of Africa. Um, for those who aren't familiar, it's like next to Ghana and Senegal, and, you know, we have uh, stews, is main, one of our main dishes, you know, uh, uh, and we're trying to combine that, since we were colonized by the French, a lot of the food are pretty similar, so I've kind of took taken those two um, uh, cultures and combined them together and created, you know, uh, what is today's Zeroin restaurant. Now, I know the customers come through here and, and they're loving the food, you know, and how does it feel when, you know, you've prepared a meal? Sometimes I know you're a chef yourself, so you get in the kitchen and, you know, let people know you're not just, you know, owning the restaurant. You actually rolled up the sleeves and get in there and makes the recipe, because these are your recipes, correct? Now, now, were they passed down from, you know, some progenitors? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. You know, my grandmother was a great cook, uh, of course. You know, my mom's a great cook. My, my dad is actually one of the better cooks in the family, so um, he actually taught me some of the st dishes that I know today. Uh, some of the, the dishes on the menu are mainstays of French culinary, uh, things like the steak au poivre and, uh, you know, the... the uh, Moulin Manier, which is the mussels uh, with the uh, white wine and those sort of things. But, you know, uh, taking some of my original dishes with the French uh, culinary uh, dishes uh, makes everything uh, okay, okay. pop. So, so you, do you have one specialty dish that when I do, like this one dish is always on point every time I do it? Oh, yeah, it's uh, definitely the peanut and Riesling sauce with the chicken or fish. Now, now, um, you know, if we can, just a little sneak peek, you know, how do you prepare that, brother? Well, you know, you just kind of, you know, if you want to cook it with some chicken, you just dice up a couple pieces of the the chicken, you know, dice up some vegetables, a little salt and pepper in the dish. You cover it up for about 15 minutes, let the water juices, the juices from the, the chicken and the, 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 the vegetables all kind of get in together and add a little bit of tomato paste and let those juices flow for a little bit. You know, if you want, you can dab a little bit of uh, white wine in there 
and uh, just let it sit. And I can't give you the whole, you know. I'm getting hungry ready, brother, but I, I already know it tastes real good, you know. And I'm seeing the people now. One thing I want to say, you know, um, and I'm appreciating the opportunity to look at the people and the establishment and the people that are eating and drinking, it's really good. But I want, if you could tell somebody young, or maybe not young, right out of high school, so you're not going to try to start a restaurant right out of high school, you know, even maybe even college, but somebody who really thinks that, you know, I'm a chef, I, you know, I love cuisine, I love to my pine cuisine, and one day my, my dream is to have a restaurant. What would be the top three things you tell them they need to really prepare themselves for if this is what they feel their passion in the industry they want to be a part of is? Well, they have to make sure they're passionate about it. You know, uh, it's not because you know how to cook that, you know, you're going to be a successful restaurateur. If you don't have the passion, it's not going to work. You have to surround yourself with people who you can't really trust anybody in this kind of business, but you, you think, you know, can help you get over that hump. And uh, third, you just have to really be ready to, you have to persevere, you have to be patient. You know, because if it, it's not going to work the first year, and if you give up easily, you're never going to be able to success, succeed in this uh, in this business. So, just patience, perseverance, you know, um, passion, and and you know, a little bit of luck, you'd be good. Yeah. Do you have any partners in this business um, venture with you? No, I'm the sole owner, sole proprietor of this establishment. Um, very difficult. Very right, difficult. Say, that means the whole thing yeah, is on yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. If it succeeds. I'm the man. If not, <laughs> it's a wrap. <laughs> yeah, oh man. Okay. So I see you have some artwork in here. Are these particular artists who uh, wanted to be featured in your restaurant? Yes. Uh, some of these paintings are done uh, the work of a friend of mine who's uh, his name is uh, John Mubiru. He's uh, actually from uh, Uganda. Uh, yeah. He's actually selling these paintings, and uh, you know, uh, we kind of we display them for him. Uh, Every three months he changes them up and uh, people love the paintings, I love the paintings and you know it goes well with what we're trying to do here. Now 37th and Madison, it's a very you know, exclusive area. How, how difficult was it to land in this particular spot? Oh very difficult, very difficult. I mean you have, um, you're surrounded by places like Asia to Cuba, it's right across the street and a couple of different restaurants here and there. You're right in, you know, uh, in the heart of Midtown, you know, Madison Square Garden is right around the corner and you know, uh, it took a lot of work, a lot of time, but eventually, you know, got the place and, you know, uh, it's still a grind. It's still a grind, you know, uh, being African American, trying to, you know, establish, you know, uh, yourself in this type of area is very difficult, but at the same time, it's not impossible. So, uh, That's right. And we all know, today is a historic day. If you don't know, we're shooting this on the inauguration day of President Barack Obama. So it's a beautiful time. And we're going to go talk to some patrons and, you know, they're going to let you know what they think about Zero Way's fine cuisine. So we're going to see you in a minute. So now we're here with a few patrons who enjoy the uh, cuisine of Zero Way. One particular young lady, fine young lady right here, Miss Jacqueline. She's going to let you know what she thinks about Zero Way. Jacqueline, how are you, dear? I'm doing well, thank you. So I see you enjoying the night, having some drinks and food. How is the cuisine for you here at Zero Way? I think it's absolutely delightful. Actually, I kind of call this my little hidden treasure. Found it on my way to uh, the bank one day, and um, ever since then, I've been hooked. It's a beautiful thing. What's your favorite dish here? DB, little shawarma, some duck rolls. Calamari, I'm biased, I like it all. Food is excellent. Now you know the Urban Wall Street is all about edutaining. We want to educate you, we want to entertain you. So understand when you have a restaurant such as this, it takes a lot of work. You really got to be sharp, you got to be on point. Well, I'm here with the general manager, Mr. He Al G. And he's going to let you know some of the you know, ways you got to be prepared and what you need to look forward to if you're going to really get your feet entrenched in being a general manager of an upscale restaurant. He out. Well, first and foremost, you know, thank you guys for being here. Um, being a general manager is not an easy thing, especially at a restaurant where you're associated with somebody's name, such as Amos Airway. So you got to make sure that everything is up to par, staff-wise, food-wise, uh, the clientele, and then making sure that there's, everything is running smoothly. Experience is always the best way to learn. Um, but that's also the hardest way to get in because you don't have the opportunity. Right. People are not giving you that chance, right. then it's really hard. Uh, I was fortunate enough that I've kind of grew up in the restaurant industry from my parents owning three restaurants to myself working with my mom and owning a restaurant and then coming to New York City, being blessed to meet Amos Zeroway and working with him. 
Um, definitely the, 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 the biggest challenge is making everybody happy. No so that means making the, your staff happy to your clients, to, uh, to, your, to the, the person that you work for. Right. And all of those things, you gotta stay into this budget, you gotta stay into the, the, the clients and, and, and the, the patrons that come here. So that's probably the hardest part about it and uh, multitasking as well as wearing these many different hats. So one day you gotta be nice and the next day you gotta be this you know, stern, right, right, right. real hard right hand kind of do. So, um, but my advice definitely uh, stay focused. And if you believe in something, whatever your passion is, you'll succeed in it. So, so say general management. So say if this was a course and you were instructing it, general management 101. Management First three things you need to make sure you're going to do if you're going to keep the owner of the establishments happy as well as the patrons. First things first is be organized. So whatever you do, have your book and have a plan and and follow that because if you're all over the place you're going to be like a chicken with your head cut off that's definitely the first thing um, second to that is be creative if you're not creative you will not succeed um, and that goes for everything from the food to your own staff and how you hire them how you train them um, and the last thing is work hard if you are a general manager it doesn't mean that you got to sit on your ass and do nothing and boss people around because that's going to just end up leading to everybody looking at you like, oh, this guy's getting a free break, a free ride, or whatever it is. So those are the first three things that I would say that you have to really focus on. And then from there, like I said, experience just kind of takes you the rest of the way to learn how to communicate, how to be able to, you know, uh, talk to patrons such as um, high caliber celebrities or sports guys that come in here that are his friends to just regular New Yorkers that just walk into the door. and. Um, all of those things just come with the experience. So. And what's the most rewarding aspect of your uh, job or career, I should say, uh, Hiao? Most rewarding is setting out a plan and then seeing it finished uh, for whatever it is. So whether it be you know, having an idea for one theme or one night, um, we do this special event Friday nights and it's looking really good and really sexy. I think you know about it. Yeah, I think that's that flirtatious Friday. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. And just seeing the, the growth and seeing how you could put something together and actually be like, I see the I see the, the, the finish. It's almost there, but I actually see it starting to grow and starting to blossom. And so for whatever it is, so we have um, you know this, this thing that we're going to be starting on Mondays, which is uh, chocolate, sexy chocolate Mondays. And, okay. and just these are all the new things and the creative things that you do. And once they actually come and people recognize you for that and say hey I'm coming for this or hey I'm doing that that as a general manager is is, is, is rewarding for me enough so um, yeah so now we're gonna check out our meal you know Amos and he all got a nice meal prepared you're gonna see a nice uh, dish and then you're gonna see us getting into it in a minute so you keep watching we'll be right back So now we're in the kitchen at Zero Ways, and here I was going to let us know what we're actually looking at being prepared. So we are where the magic happens in here, where you'll catch Amos uh, usually for lunch cooking. Uh, right here we have uh, African style uh, calamari. So it's sauteed um, on a bed of uh, mixed greens. And uh, as well, they have uh, cooking some uh, Cajun chicken, which should be up in a minute. Um, everything in here is, is done predominantly uh, by hand from scratch so the food does take a little bit longer to be to be made and be prepared but it's done with love uh, you won't find canned food or, or any stuff like that in here um, and uh, Amos has been here quite a few times learning how to how to teaching these guys how to make some of their dishes uh, from from the Ivory Coast um, and so this is one of them that's a, another special that you find yourself uh, enjoying while you're at uh, Zero Way Restaurant. Yeah, I think I've had that particular dish right there, and I'm going to enjoy uh, sampling that one more time. It's a good look in here. Um, it, it's a beautiful situation. I'm telling you, if you're in Midtown Manhattan, 37 Madison, 
13 E3701. You see it, trust me, it's good. Smell it. It's a beautiful situation. Yeah, thank you for bringing us in. Let's go, uh, let's go sample. Give me a minute. So now you see we have an amazing dish here. I got my brother Amos Zeroway. He's gonna close it out with us and let us know this amazing dish. This is um, calamari a la Zeroway, which is um, uh, typically uh, calamari would be would be fried, but here we do it sauteed calamari with a little bit of red African spices from the Ivory Coast. Uh, we slow roast it and uh, saute it in a pan so it gets nice and crispy and brown. And then uh, we add some of the um, tomato paste and the African spices, uh, which I can't reveal. Um, so it gets a nice, nice color. And then uh, we add a little bit of some tomato, um, tomato sauce. And uh, at the end, this is end result with a little bit of basil to decorate. And you know, uh, we'll let you try and let me know what you think. Thirteen East Thirty Seventh Street between Fifth and Madison Zure Restaurant and Bar. I can't talk in my mouth full because my mom told me that's rude. This food is amazing, so I hope I see y'all here. I'm about to get my grub on. I'm gonna see y'all in a minute. Urban Wall Street, face. Right. Amazing, amazing. Now we're here with Miss Seen, hey. another patron of Zero Wave, pretty young lady. How are you this evening? I'm doing great. Happy Obama Day. Right, happy Obama Day, right? So, you know, we're talking about, you know, we talked to Amos. He has an amazing restaurant. It's I know amazing. the food is amazing. How do you enjoy the cuisine here? I love it. I love it. I simply enjoy it very much. Do you have a favorite dish here? I like it all. You like it all? Yes. Yeah. How long have you been coming to Amos? Um, for like about a year. Okay. Yes. Would you recommend it to everybody around the world? Everyone. Just come and, you know, check it out. You'll love it. So you know what it is.